Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. Minecraft is still as popular as ever, even with Microsoft buying it and considering it's been played and active for a long, long time. I've played my fair share of it, solo or with friends, and even with mods, including the first Battle Royale mods before Fortnite was even a thought in Epic's minds. Minecraft is great, and you can run your own server super easily to invite friends and keep your world going even when you're not playing. We'll see two different ways to start your server. One that requires no command line at all through Linode, this video's sponsor, and a more manual way, step by step. Linode one-click app. The easiest way is probably to use Linode's one-click apps. Linode allows you to create a machine tailored to your needs and start it with one click, and I use it for all kinds of projects. If you want to try running your own Minecraft server using Linode, don't forget to click on the link in the description below and use the offer code LinuxEXP19 for a $20 credit. This gets you up to 4 months of free 24-7 Minecraft servers. Linode offers a one-click install for a Minecraft server with a lot of different settings you can tweak. Once you have created your account and used your promo code, you can just go to the one-click apps menu and select Minecraft. You'll get all the options you need to configure your server, from the type of world, the seed, the difficulty, the various spawns. Select whatever you want here to change your server settings. This one-click install uses Debian 9 as a base for maximum stability. Pick the region where your machine will run, in my case, the UK, since it's the closest to where I live, and finally the type of machine you need. Since my server is going to be a small one, I'll pick the standard Linode with 2GB of RAM for $10 a month. If you plan to play with a few friends only, you could even go for the Nanode with only 1GB of RAM at $5 a month. Type a name for your server, then a root password in case you need to connect to the server directly to change some stuff, and create the Linode. The server will run automatically when you boot up your machine, and all you need to do to connect to it is get its IP address from the Linode manager and enter it in your Minecraft client in the multiplayer at server page. Okay, but what if you want to do things yourself and learn more about how to create your own server? Well, we can also do things manually. The first step is to set up your own machine and distribution. You can start a machine from any cloud-based provider or install a server version of your favorite distro on a machine at home if you prefer. Once that's done, here are the steps we need to take. Create a user. By default, your server will only have a root user, which is not fantastic. We're going to create a user with less direct access to the system, just to be a little bit more secure. Let's type add user, then your username. I'll pick Nick. This command will add a new user to your server. You'll have to answer a few questions and fill in a password for said user. Next, we'll give it sudo permissions to make sure that this user can install stuff and actually manage the server. So we'll type user mod dash a capital G sudo and then your username. Finally, we'll log out of the root user by typing logout, and we'll log in as our new user by typing its username in the command prompt and then the password we just gave to that user. Install Java and the Minecraft server. Minecraft needs Java to run, so we'll need to grab that first. It's a simple install command. First, we update all the packages, sudo apt update, and then we install the Java JRE. With sudo apt install open jdk 11 jre. Now we'll need to download the actual server binaries to be able to run it. We'll create a folder first to store everything related to the server. Let's type mkdir minecraft, then cd minecraft. This created a minecraft folder inside our user's home directory, and then we opened and went inside that minecraft folder. Next, we'll type wget, followed by the URL of the server file, which I got directly from the Minecraft launcher. I left it in the description of the video. wget is a command line program that will allow you to download files from any server as long as you know its URL and the server lets you access the file. Now, our server.jar file is downloaded inside the Minecraft directory on our home directory. We can check that by typing ls. This will list all folders and files in our current Minecraft directory, which is for now only server.jar. Start your server. The Minecraft server is a Java program, packaged as a Java archive. To run it, we need to use the Java JRE we just installed. So we're going to type java-xmx2048m-xms1024m-jar server.jar no GUI. The command reads like this. Java tells the server to run a Java program. 
The XMX2048 M parameter tells the server to never use more than 2GB of RAM. The XMS 1024M parameter tells the server to start using 1GB of RAM. The dash jar parameter tells Java that it's going to run a Java archive. And then we tell Java the name of the file it needs to run, here it's server.jar. Finally, the no GUI option tells the server to not open a graphical user interface since we're on a server, so no need to get that kind of overhead. Press enter and your server should start. It should, however, on first start give you an error, because you didn't accept the end user license agreement. To tell it you accept, just type nano eula.txt and then change eula equals false to eula equals true to indicate that you have read and agreed to the eula. Then press Ctrl plus O to save and Ctrl plus X to exit. Finally, type the exact same command you typed before or you can just press up on your keyboard to recall that command, press enter and the server should run now nicely. Join your server. Well, you just need to find the IP address of your server. If you're using a cloud-based provider, it's easy. Just go to your manager and copy-paste the URL. If you're using your own home server, you can type ifconfig in the terminal to get your IP address. Once you got it, just paste that in the add server field inside of your Minecraft client, and you'll be able to join. And there you go. Now go play and have fun in a world of your own. If you like this video, don't hesitate to sound off in the comments. I could expand on this to talk about getting mods up and running and tweaking the various server settings as well. Don't hesitate to like, subscribe and turn on notifications, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!